In today's video, we're talking about different types of lights. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to talk about the different types of lights that we use in photography. And specifically, we're going to look at the differences between constant light or continuous light and strobe. Now, at the time of me making this video, it is now November, 2021. And I think we're living in a time where we are really spoiled for choice as far as photographers. When it comes to lighting, I don't think we've ever had so many choices available to us, but it doesn't matter which type of light you select. They still fall under one or two categories, which is continuous light or flash. So today we're going to go through the pros and cons of both systems so that you can make an informed decision if you're thinking about getting some lights. Now, I've got a couple of samples here that I'm going to use for the rest of the video. Now, obviously, these are not the only type of lights available. There's different forms as well. But in order to compare the two and go through the pros and cons of each system, these are the ones we're going to use. So in, over here for the continuous light, I've got an Aperture 120D. This is a very popular light. This is a constant light. And over here, I've got an old Elenchrom unit. This is about 10 years old. They don't make these anymore. This is a BX500RI. Um, but the principles of strobe or flash uh, haven't really changed. So this is the one we're going to use for strobe. Now, there's a lot of different things that set these systems apart. But for myself as a photographer, the two main differences that I'm concerned with are duration of light and power. Okay, so let's talk about those two things for a second so that you're clear on what I mean. When I'm talking about duration of light, what I mean is the amount of time that that light is on. So for continuous light, you set the duration of the light. You turn it on and you turn it off when you're finished. That could be one minute, 15 minutes, it could be an hour. When it comes to flash though, whatever power you've got that set to, it delivers all of that light in just a fraction of a second, hence it's called a flash. The second thing is power. Typically speaking, you cannot get as much light out of a continuous light as you can out of a strobe. And there's a few differences for that, but this, uh, this Aperture 120D, uh, I think this does about 100, 120 watts. This Allen Chrome unit does 500 watts, but I've got bigger units than this one that can produce 1100 and 1200 watts. And if you were to produce a constant light that does 1200 watts, you would have all sorts of problems with cooling and typically those lights are reserved for Hollywood studios. So now that we understand the differences between these two, let's grab one of them and we'll go through the pros and cons from a photography point of view. All right, so we're going to do continuous lighting first and how this is going to work is I'll give you the pros, I'll give you the cons and we'll just go from there. Uh, now the first benefit of these is that they're still a little bit cheaper uh, when you compare it to a flash unit of comparable quality. Now, when I say quality, I'm not talking about build quality or anything like that. I'm talking about quality of light. So uh, one of the, or probably the most common way uh, to test the quality of a continuous light source is using a thing called the CRI index. So all of these lights will have a CRI index, which stands for Color, Render Color Rendering Index. Um, and what you're looking for is a value of 95 or above, which I think these are 95. Uh, and it just means that your colors are going to look really nice. The second benefit is that these come in different shapes and sizes. Uh, this is a little light panel made by Aperture. Uh, I'm a fan of Aperture, if you haven't guessed already. Uh, again, another Aperture light here. This is a much bigger light. Um, over here, we have a mat. This is like called a light mat uh, because it's flexible and these are really handy for putting lights in places where some of these may not fit or you can just wrap them around things as well. Um, got a dimmer for that, as you can see there. Um, this is not an aperture mat, by the way. This is uh, a homemade mat, and uh, they're not that difficult to make. So if you are interested in me uh, making a video and showing you how you make one of these, uh, just leave a comment in the section below, and yeah, I'll make a video on how to make one. The third benefit is that with continuous light, you can see exactly what the light is doing. There is no flash. Uh, you can look through the viewfinder, you can move your lights around, and what you see is what you get. The next benefit is that these lights are perfect if you also do a little bit of video on the side. Obviously, you can't use flash for video, but these are perfect. And that's where the CRI really comes in. So if you are going to do video, make sure that your CRI value of the lights that you purchase are at least 95. The next benefit is a feature that you can get with most of these panel lights these days, which is by color. And what that means is that you can change the color temperature of the light without having to use any gels. So let me just show you what I mean. This is a bicolor light. Um, so if I turn that on at the moment, 
Um, you probably can't see that, but I've got that set to 5600 Kelvin, which is what this light here is. So if I place that light there, it look, it should look exactly the same. But what I can do is I can change the temperature of the light to make it either a little bit warmer, and you can see, I'm not sure if you can tell that, or a little bit cooler. So I'll just change it and you tell me whether you can see the difference. It should be warming up uh, there. I should look a little bit more orange there and I should look a little bit more blue there. Now, with uh, when it comes to strobes, the way to do that is you have to use gels. So it's just a really nice feature to be able to do that straight into the light. Okay, so from my perspective, those are the main pros. Uh, I'm sure there's more, but they're the ones that affect me. So now let's talk about the negative things about these type of lights. Okay, so let's get to the negatives of these type of lights. And they all center around the one issue, which is that they don't produce as much light as a strobe. This means that you're going to have to think differently about the way that you use them. Now, because there is less light, you are going to have to compensate for that in the camera, which means doing things such as raising your ISO, which can lower the quality of the image. It also means that you may have to open up your lens, which is going to affect the depth of field, or you're going to have to drag the shutter to get a longer shutter speed, which may introduce some motion blur. And this doesn't mean that you can't use constant lighting in your photography. It just means that your approach is going to have to be different. Now, there is one thing that continuous lighting will not do, and that is overpower the sun. Even my 500 watt Allen chrome unit that I showed you earlier can't do that. And when I need to overpower the sun, I'm usually referring back to my Ranger units, which are 1100 watt units. Now, if you're enjoying this video or you're finding it useful, please don't forget to click the like button. That is the best way that you can support me. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure that you do so. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, so moving on to strobes. Uh, and the main benefit of these, the obvious one, is obviously the power. These things can put out a lot of power. So uh, this one here is a sort of middle of the range 500 watt unit, but I've used two of these to light up a stage and it works great. I've also stuck one of these in the back of a room in a hall and have been able to give the whole uh, the whole room a bit of a glow, uh, which is just not possible to do with uh, continuous light. So the first and obvious benefit, now as a result of that power, you get along all these other benefits, such as being able to shoot at a really low ISO. I try to keep my ISO at around about 100 or 200 to get the best quality photo that I can get. Now with constant light or continuous light, often you're racing that ISO to try and make up for that lack of light. With these ones here, there is so much power that typically it's not a problem to shoot at 100 or 200 ISO. The second thing is that you can overpower the sun. And if you don't know what that means, it just means that you can project more light onto the subject than the sun can with your light and it creates some really amazing images. Now these type of lights also come in different forms. Uh, this is the studio strobe. This is something that you'll be very familiar with. This just sits on top of your camera and this is referred to as a speed light. But there are some instances of sort of in between hybrids of these two as well, which is just a little bit bigger than these, but not quite as powerful as these. So you do have uh, options when it comes to the form factors of these type of lights. The other great thing about these strobes is that you can freeze action. Because the duration of a flash is so short, just a few hundreds of a second, you can set your camera to only see the light from this strobe. So whatever the light illuminates during that time, those few hundreds of a second, that is what your photo is going to capture. The other great thing about strobes is that because there's so much power in one of these, when you fire off a shot, this fires off so much light that it drowns out any other light in the room. So any light coming from a window or a tungsten light, it's not going to be enough to contaminate the light coming out of the unit. All right, so let's look at the negatives of the strobes. And the first one is that they are just a little bit harder to learn than the constant light. With the constant light, you can see exactly what the light is doing because it's always on. With this one here, because it happens in a flash, it's just a fraction of a second, you really have to capture the photograph, review the photograph, and then you can either turn your light up and down or move it around to get the right exposure. Okay, so the next point is not so much of a negative, it's just something that you need to be aware of. If you are going to purchase a strobe, then you will also need some way to fire off the strobe. Now you can get cables that go from the camera to, uh, to the strobes, but um, generally speaking, most people don't use that because they're a bit of a hazard in the studio. So they tend to go for something like this, which is called a trigger. So this is a wireless trigger, and this is the Allen Chrome one, and it just sits on top of the hot shoe, uh, and then the hot shoe sends the signal to the trigger, which sends the signal to the strobe. So it's something to be aware of, because if you are going to purchase one of these, then you will also have the expense 
of uh, having to purchase a set of triggers, although that you can get some pretty good inexpensive ones these days. Now let's talk about one of the big negatives when it comes to using this sort of light with a DSLR, and that is the sync speed. Now you don't need to know the mechanics behind it, but just understand that you are not going to be able to shoot any faster than one two hundredth of a second or one two hundred and fiftieth of a second when you're using this type of light. There is a reason behind it, and I can make a video if you're interested in uh, where I can show you why that happens. But all you need to know for now is that if you're going to be using strobe, doesn't matter what kind of strobe, whether it be a flash unit or one of these ones, the top speed that you're going to be able to shoot at is 1 200th or 1 250th of a second. Now, another thing to be aware of is that typically with strobes, you cannot change the temperature of the light internally within the unit itself. If you want to do that, you're going to have to use gels. Now that may sound like a negative, but it can actually be a bit of a positive because most manufacturers all tend to be around the 5600 Kelvin for the strobes, which means that if you're looking to mix and match from different manufacturers, you shouldn't see too much of a difference in the lights. So that's it for this video of continuous light versus strobe. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give the video a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so. I put out videos like this every week to help you with your photography. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those, make sure that you click the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you don't miss out on any videos that I put out in the future. Also, don't forget to check out ministryofphoto.com. That's where you'll find links to all of my videos, there's tutorials, there's reviews, uh, there's even some freebies that you can download. It's completely free, so make sure you check it out. That's ministryofphoto.com. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. That's probably the best place to get in touch with me. Otherwise, you can reach me through any of the usual social media platforms. You'll find links to all of those in the description. Again, don't forget to like this video. I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Ooh.